Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror mystery film, Perfection. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with Charlotte, a great cello prodigy who had to put aside her career at a young age to care for her ailing mother. She has been caring for her mother for years without considering her own future or profession. In the early scenes, her ailing mother dies and Charlotte decides to resume her career as a cellist. Charlotte flies to Shanghai and contacts her former cello instructor. He's also the director of the renowned music academy in Boston, the same school Charlotte previously attended. Charlotte is walking through Shanghai when she notices a billboard advertising the show of Lizzie, a girl who attended the same academy as Charlotte. It turns out, after Charlotte had to give up her career as a cellist, Lizzie took her place. Charlotte is summoned to a theater where the instructor and his wife welcome her. They embrace her and offer condolences to Charlotte's mother. They are overjoyed to meet her after so long and encourage her to participate in the finals as a judge. The instructor announces that today is the final of a competition that will award the winner a scholarship in the Music Academy. Before he begins, the instructor introduces Lizzie and Charlotte to the crowd, describing them as his best students. Since Lizzie will also be one of the judges, the instructor introduces her to Charlotte. But it turns out the girls already know each other. Indeed, Lizzie states that as a child she greatly admired Charlotte. The two girls form a strong friendship based on a mutual appreciation for each other's talents. During the audition, Lizzie sits next to Charlotte and reveals to her with certainty which of the girls will win. She then spies on the contestants' parents and discovers them engaging in naughty behavior, confessing that it turns her on. Later, the girls go outside to talk, and Lizzie states that Charlotte motivated her to learn to play the cello. Strangely, Charlotte asks if she has ever thought about leaving the academy, but Lizzie states that it is like family to her, and she has never thought about it. Lizzie says she is on vacation for the next two weeks and will finally be able to relax a bit. Taking the glass that Charlotte is holding, Lizzie drinks it in one gulp, and then they go downstairs, where they see a man drop his glass. He begins to bleed from the nose and vomits, after which he falls unconscious. Another guest hints that it may be some kind of fever that is spreading south. Soon after, the girls are summoned by the instructor, who asks Lizzie to perform on the cello for the theater delegates. Lizzie tells him that she will perform for them, only if Charlotte serves as the second cello. Although hesitant, Charlotte finally agrees, and the duo performs an extraordinary performance that stuns the audience. The scene shifts to the two girls enjoying the evening, dancing at the club, and being intimate with each other in a hotel room. Lizzie is in love and says that while they are very different, they are extremely similar. Lizzie invites Charlotte to join her on a little vacation to tour the South, and Charlotte accepts without hesitation. After a few shots of Chinese vodka, they both fall asleep. The next morning, Lizzie wakes up with a headache from the vodka she drank the night before. Charlotte takes some ibuprofen to relieve Lizzie's headache, and for some reason, she tells her to drink it with the vodka. Lizzie does so without thinking about it because they are on vacation anyway. Later, they both go out and Lizzie says she feels sick but still wants to visit South China. So Charlotte suggests they eat something before they get on the bus, so maybe she will feel better. They stop at an outdoor restaurant, but the meal is not very appealing. Later, they board a filthy old bus headed south. During the trip, Lizzie takes more pills from Charlotte, hoping that she will be better. Charlotte tells her that she should not take them on an empty stomach, but Lizzie is too sick to be able to think rationally. Sometime later, Lizzie says she feels worse and worse and needs to vomit. Charlotte has to ask the bus driver to stop so Lizzie can do her things. But since the driver does not speak English, she finds it difficult to convince him to pull over. Fortunately, one of the passengers speaks English and asks the bus to stop. Meanwhile, the other passengers give Lizzie a bottle of water. Soon after, the driver reluctantly agrees to stop, but is annoyed by the interruption of his schedule. Lizzie goes out and is embarrassed when she does her needs. She then gets on the bus, but feels sick again. The passengers are fearful that she's infected with a contagious virus, so they force her to put on a mask. Unfortunately, Lizzie's situation does not improve. She is dizzy, pale, and shaking. Unable to control herself, she tries to vomit through the window, but it doesn't open, and she vomits on it. Charlotte is shocked to learn that the vomit contains worms, and Lizzie begins to panic when she sees them. Lizzie suspects that she has been infected with a terrible disease. Lizzie begins screaming and crying inside the bus, banging her head against the window glass. The bus driver loses patience and throws both girls out, leaving them stranded in the middle of nowhere. An English-speaking passenger tells Charlotte that there is a village nearby, and a person gives her two small bottles of water. 
Lizzie vomits again after a short distance and notices more insects. Then Lizzie says she feels something moving under her skin. The girls start screaming as they see the insects cutting into her skin and coming out. Lizzie desperately calls for help and Charlotte hands her a butcher's bombing knife which is seemingly prepared for her. With no other choice, Lizzie grabs the knife and cuts her hand without mercy. Suddenly, the scene shifts back to the hotel and there it turns out that Charlotte did not give Lizzie ibuprofen but gave her pills prescribed for her mother. When mixed with alcohol, these pills cause hallucinations, so Lizzie was not infected with some strange virus but was deceived by Charlotte. It was Charlotte herself who said that she saw insects in order to manipulate Lizzie to cut her hand under hallucination. The reason Charlotte did this may have been envy, because after leaving the academy, Lizzie became the favorite of the instructor who forgot about Charlotte. Three weeks later, Lizzie appears at the gate of the instructor's property. He's shocked to see Lizzie in this state and leads her inside. Lizzie says that Charlotte forced her to take hallucinogenic pills and cut her hand. The cops cannot intervene because Lizzie is solely responsible for her actions, as Charlotte did not force her to take the pills or cut her hand. Lizzie is certain that Charlotte did this out of envy as she has taken her place and is living the life of her dreams. Lizzie asks to stay in the academy, saying that she can either be an instructor or compose compositions. However, the instructor tells her that she is no longer useful without her hand and will have to leave the academy. The next morning, the instructor tells Lizzie that he has found an apartment for her and will pay for everything, including rehabilitation. The scene shifts to Charlotte preparing dinner at her home. Suddenly, she hears a noise and goes to check. Soon after, an irate Lizzie bursts into Charlotte's house and stuns her with a taser, eventually beating her furiously. Lizzie then ties her up and takes her back to the compound in the trunk of her car. When the instructor learns of this, he welcomes the two inside. When Charlotte regains consciousness, the instructor asks her why she did such a horrible thing to Lizzie. Charlotte explains that she did it only to save her. The scene then ships to a teenage Charlotte as she plays the cello with her cello instructor. After Charlotte makes a small mistake while playing the cello, he becomes severely enraged. It's revealed that Charlotte was systematically abused and punished with a brutal regime of rape and torture whenever she failed to achieve musical perfection, causing her to suffer severe psychological damage as a result. Therefore, she had to spend many years in a mental institution to recover from the trauma. Charlotte also admits that she recognized the tattoo on Lizzie's shoulder in the hotel. That tattoo was given to every girl indoctrinated into the sex cult run by the instructor and his aides. Here it becomes clear that Charlotte's only mission was to save Lizzie from the same fate. In rage, the instructor ties Charlotte up and drags her somewhere. Then she pushes him and hits him in the face. When she finds himself in front of Lizzie, she hits her and then tries to escape, but the instructor catches up with her and punches her in the face. When Charlotte wakes up, she is dressed and tied to a chair in the center of the stage. The instructor offers her the opportunity to be free, but only if she can play the cello flawlessly. The instructor and his assistants gather to watch Charlotte's performance. He informs her that if she misses even one note, she will face the same punishment as in the past, but this time, it will be the young girl arriving from Shanghai who will suffer the punishment. Charlotte tries to convince him that she can no longer play like before and asks the instructor to punish her if she makes a mistake, not the young girl. The instructor's wife tells her that everything has already been decided and orders her to play. Charlotte starts and everything seems to go perfectly. Everyone listens, fascinated, until Charlotte misses a note and the instructor realizes it. After this, he sends the young girl to her room and tells Charlotte that he was joking. In fact, Charlotte will be punished for her mistake. Next, he gives orders for Lizzie and his two aides to do whatever they want with Charlotte and to notify him once they are finished. In the next scene, Charlotte is bound by her wrists and the two aides approach her, but Lizzie stops them and demands that she be the one to torture her first since it was Charlotte who manipulated her to cut her own hand and ruined her life. Lizzie asks the two to spread Charlotte's legs so she can hurt her. They grab and spread Charlotte's legs. However, just as Lizzie is about to start, the two nasty men collapse on the floor. Suddenly, the two girls start tongue massaging each other passionately. It's revealed that this was part of the plan, as Lizzie poisoned their drinks. The scene returns to Charlotte's house when Lizzie has broken in. Lizzie states that she would have killed her, but she realized the ugly truth about the instructor and his academy. Then, a flashback shows the time when Lizzie cut her hand. Charlotte reveals that she did all this to save her from her fate. Charlotte knew that she could not convince her with words, and the instructor would not kick her out, so cutting her hand was the only solution. After Lizzie broke into Charlotte's house, she forgave her and told her they had to stop the instructor before he ruins other girls' lives. 
Meanwhile, the instructor relaxes in his room, waiting for news about Charlotte from others. The doorbell rings, and his wife enters without saying anything. He asks if she has put the young girl to bed, but his wife doesn't talk, and then pisses herself. Then she begins to stagger, and Lizzie enters, pushing her to the floor, revealing a knife in her back. Charlotte enters and removes her wig, revealing that she has recently been released from the psychiatric institution. The instructor is bewildered when he realizes that the two girls are armed with knives and want to kill him. He justifies himself by saying that he is mentally ill and needs help, but Lizzie does not listen to his smelly bullshit and lashes out with the first cut, splattering blood on Charlotte's face. Here she has a flashback where she runs free outside. Then Charlotte starts to stab him, but she falls to the ground and drops the knife. She and the instructor start to crawl to get the knife back, but he gets the upper hand and grabs it. Charlotte jumps on him and tries to hold his hand steady, but he pushes her and stabs her in the forearm. At that moment, Lizzie gets up and repeatedly hits the instructor with a sharp instrument. After the incident, Lizzie and Charlotte play the cello together on the same instrument. Charlotte, who is missing an arm, plays the bow, while Lizzie handles the strings with her single hand. Attending the performance is their special audience, the instructor, whose limbs and eyes have been removed. The film doesn't allow us to hear how the girls play, but they most likely torture the instructor by playing his favorite composition badly. However, all he can do now is listen, because the punishment for lack of perfection is out of the picture. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.